Thank you. Um, like he said, this was just a pilot study one summer, um, last summer that we did looking at these sampling efficiencies between hoop nets and tandem, um, trot, or, excuse me, tandem hoop nets and trot lines. With that being said, I'd like to give you a broad view. Um, Ictalurids are one of the most targeted um, families of fish in the United States. With that being said, in South Dakota, it doesn't have as much popularity across the whole state. It has some very localized angling, angling pressure on the eastern side of the state, as well as the Missouri River and its tributaries. In 2017, along the Missouri River, anglers targeted channel catfish about 21% of the time. And in 2019, there was a um, channel catfish record was removed. This was about a 54-year-old record. And this really caused anglers to try to become the new record holder of channel catfish. This also brought um, um, light into that there is a lack of channel oh. catfish, catfish management along the Missouri River. And so this was one of the pilot projects to really look into um, management. And so there seems to be this issue with properly indexing channel catfish and the lack of standard sampling is mostly that issue. And the reason for that, there's a few reasons, but the two that um, stick out to me is low catch rates, as well as looking at the bias and age and size structure with sampling gear. This paper has been talked, I don't know how many times, Boning et al. 2013, in which they looked at um, a reference review, looking at sampling gear for blue catfish channel and flatheads. And for channel catfish, they said the superior gear was baited tandem hoop nets. Now, South Dakota and other states are guilty of not utilizing the tandem hoop nets. And this is just because along the Missouri River, they're really focusing on the walleye populations and sagar populations, and channel catfish are being caught in those gill nets. And so it doesn't take that much more effort to pull those spines and age them in the wintertime. But with that being said, there is some bias in catch with gill nets, and that is with their underestimating smaller fish of 200 millimeters and overestimating those larger fish of 300 millimeters and larger. And so you're only really capturing 100 millimeters in a length range when fish are ranging, you know, from zero to over six, seven hundred millimeters in our systems. And so the goal of this project was to really guide South Dakota towards creating a standard protocol for sampling channel catfish in their lodic waters. And we had four objectives. One, to evaluate sampling gear, tandem hoop nets, and trot lines specifically. To determine if one of those gear were more efficient than the other to determine if there was a temporal difference in sampling, really trying to pinpoint um, seasonally when we should be focusing on our sampling efforts, and then propose standardized protocols from what we have learned from this study. And so to set this up, if you're not very familiar with South Dakota, it is split, um, the Missouri River splits it in half. So it's this main river system right here. And along the Missouri River, there is four reservoirs. And the, the third reservoir, which spans right here-ish, is Francis Case, and the White River is the main tributary into Francis Case. And that was where um, this study took place. It took place along um, three months, June, July, and August, and it was done on the lower section at three sites. This top site right here was basically a site that we had to portage in a boat and all our equipment at. And so there was a lot of effort being put into sampling those catfish at that location. At these two locations, the lower end, the first two months, we could use an, a jet boat. And then the last month, due to low discharge, we had to use an airboat to set our gear and stuff like that. And this picture on the right is just showing you um, sort of the nature of the White River and it is extremely difficult to sample. It has a shifting bottom, and so you're always worried, are you gonna lose gear, or where is my gear gonna end up? And um, this was actually one of the locations um, that I was hoping to sample. It was much closer to the other two downstream locations, and about a week before, um, the landowner called me and said, Amy, you're not gonna be able to get into 
um, the White River anymore where I was because the large flood event took away the road and the access site into that um, river access area. And so we used five tandem hoop nets and five trot lines at each location throughout the three months. And our tandem hoop nets aren't what most people consider um, the standard or the commonly used tandem hoop nets. These are much smaller. Um, a single hoop net is only about 1.6 meters tall for a total series of about eight meters in total length. We also had two different mesh sizes in the series. Um, 21 millimeter mesh were on the outside and then we had a 35 millimeter mesh hoop net in the middle. Um, these were divided by one inch bridles. They had four hoops per hoop net and then they only had one throat. Um, baited waist cheese was used in all three of the nets in the tandem series. Um, for our trot lines, we actually followed Wilkerson and Durbush 2012, and this is a pallid sturgeon um, trot line protocol. It's 100 feet long, 20 hooks, um, baited with night crawlers. Out in the field, we took effort looking at the time it took to set, pull, as well as empty fish out of the gear, and this was recorded in seconds. And this was later calculated and used to calculate, excuse me, catch per personnel hour effort. Out in the field, we also looked at length and weight of all channel catfish. And then back in the lab, we aged um, 10 individuals from every 25 millimeter length bin from each of the three locations. For the analysis portion, we compared the two gear looking at mean length as well as um, age. For the temporal scale, we only looked at the individual gear by itself, not comparing the individual gear across the temporal scale together. And we looked at mean length, catch per unit effort, and catch per personnel hour effort. And then we also looked at the difference between the two different mesh sizes used in the tandem hoop net series, in which we looked at mean length as well as catch per unit effort. And so, when I talk later in the talk about catch per unit effort, it's only talking about a single hoop net, even though they were ran in the series together. And so looking at the results, this figure is just showing um, our percent frequency with the species that we caught between the two gears. And the main thing I really want to point out is bycatch was not really an issue in our study. For both gear, over 98% of our fish caught in our gear was channel catfish. And I'd like to note we didn't have any problems with turtles or anything like that in our study as well. So really, channel catfish really targeted our gear very well. Looking at mean catch per unit effort for tandem hoop nets was 20.16 fish per set, as well as trot lines was only 1.4 fish per night set. Looking at catch per, un or catch per personnel hour effort for trot lines, it was a high of 1.77 fish per hour effort. And for tandem hoop nets, it was a 31.48 fish per hour effort. So tandem hoop nets did a much better than the trot lines. Looking at length distributions, on the x-axis you have length and on the y-axis you have percent frequency. One of the big things that really stood out to me during sampling was how different our sampling sizes were between the two different gears. Trot lines across the three months, we only caught 44 individuals, while the tandem hoop nets caught 887 individuals. Um, between the two gears, there was also a significant difference in mean length, in which trot lines had a significantly higher mean length at 377, while um, tandem hoop nets had a mean length of 310. Um, tandem hoop nets also had a much larger range in lengths, even though these smaller individuals right here were not fully recruited to the gear in tandem hoop nets, we didn't really see them at all in our trot line sampling. And then the tandem hoop nets as well still caught a few of those larger fish like the trot, um, trot line did as well. Looking at age frequency, um, you have age on the x-axis and percent frequency on your y-axis. And there wasn't an actual significant difference between age distribution between the two gear. Um, the dark bars are showing tandem hoop nets. The light bars are showing trot lines. And one thing I would like to point out is 
With the tandem hoop nets, Channel Catfish uh, recruited one year sooner to the gear at age three, and they contributed about 21% of the total catch was age three individuals. Where trot lines recruited fully at age four contributed about 23% of that total catch came from that year class. For tandem hoop nets, ages range from zero to 16, while trot lines range from one to um, 18 years old. And so again, you're seeing that the tandem hoop nets are catching those smaller, younger individuals. Looking at the temporal scale for trot lines, there was not a significant difference when looking at catch per unit effort, catch per personnel hour effort, as well as mean length. And then when looking at tandem hoop nets, there was not a significant difference when looking at catch per unit effort or catch per personnel hour effort. But when looking at mean length across the months, there was a significant difference in um, August showing up. And the significant difference, the mean length was 267, while in June and July, the mean lengths were 318 and 327. And so there was a bit of a difference. And the main contribution why um, August was so much lower was these smaller individuals seemed to appear in our sample in which June and July they, they were not there. Looking at the difference between the um, bar mesh between the two um, hoop nets used, there was a significant difference when looking at mean length. Um, this larger tandem hoop net mesh on the bottom had a mean length of 413 while the smaller tandem hoop net, or the smaller mesh, had a mean length of 310. They also had a significant difference between catch unit effort, where the smaller tandem hoop, or, or the smaller mesh, I should say, um, had a CPUE of 9.27, while the larger mesh had a much lower CPUE at only 1.74. And again, this is just CPUE per single hoop net. This isn't ran as tandem because they were ran as tandem together. So looking at the temporal scale, why was there that shift in August and we didn't see those smaller individuals in June and July? Um, one reason is we think that it could be looking at breeding migrations. Um, in the spring and early summer, those large breeding individuals are moving from the reservoir into the river system to spawn. Um, the other reason is there is a very, um, there was a decrease in discharge, and this figure on the left is showing days on the x-axis and um, discharge on the y-axis. And like I previously said before, we could, we were able to use jet boats during the first two months and forced to use an airboat during the last month, providing um, that the discharge was so low that we weren't able to use our jet boat. And so the blue arrows are showing when we sampled and what the discharge was around that time. And it doesn't look like a lot in this figure, but let me tell you out in the field, it was a lot. Um, and with this decreased discharge, it, it had a habitat shift. So larger channel catfish, like deeper types of habitat, complex habitats, so those cut banks that are being inundated with water. And when you decrease that discharge, there was a lot more pool types of habitats that were shallow and riffles that were more prevalent in August, that later summer month. And that's why we're contributing these smaller fish are probably moving into that area, into the White River, and, and really protecting themselves from you know, the larger fish. Oops, wrong way. Um, and with that, I would like to leave you with three main points. In our study, tandem hoop nets outperformed trot lines next to none. Um, it wasn't a question which one did better. Um, there was a temporal difference between um, months using tandem hoop nets. However, we're not really sure yet if um, June and July would be the best time to sample, but with the data that we have now, we would suggest that just because those were not significantly different, that that's when we would look at um, mean lengths and sample. But 
For any recommendations, we recommend just due to the nature of the White River, it, it will eat your gear up and not think twice about it, that you only have 24 hour sets. I know a lot of literature out there says two to three day sets are much better for hoop nets, but just due to the nature, we can't really afford to do that in this system. Um, also increased bait volume. Um, there is discharge in this system, and so increased bait, we're hoping to increase the consistency throughout our 24 hour time period that bait is being released. And then just knowing what we know from this study, there needs to be more research looking into different tandem hoop net configurations. Like I said, our hoop nets were pretty little, but we would like to look more into those larger 3.4 meter hoop nets ran in tandem instead of the little bitty ones that we used, even though they were fun, um, we would like to investigate what those would do. And then also try to pinpoint better when a better sampling time is, or if there is a better sampling time. And with that, I'll take any questions. How much angling pressure do you, does the White River get? I would say it's pretty localized, mostly in the spring, and, and we don't run a creeler, so I can't confidently say what or how much, but mm -hmm. I think in the spring it gets pretty hard. And it would be fairly hard to creel just due to the fact that most of our catfish anglers are usually targeting them more at the nighttime and, and when our creeling doesn't normally take place. But I mean, we could always look into that, yeah. Okay, thanks.